Why do you think this locker was opened in the first place? What do you mean? There's no reason for Officer Marshall to open his locker at the time of the crime. Yet he did, despite the chance it might be discovered later as it has been. Which means he didn't originally plan to open his locker. According to the defense's argument, Officer Jake Marshall dressed up as Detective Goodman at the time of the crime. Then, after the crime was committed, he opened his own locker for some unknown reason. The fact that a white cloth is sticking out of the locker seems to indicate that he opened it in order to put the cloth inside. So, so what exactly is this piece of cloth? Perhaps... Perhaps the video is the key to all our unanswered questions. I don't have any evidence, so this video is my only shot. Hmm. Very well. Let's take yet another look at the security tape. After committing the crime, the witness opened the locker to put away the white cloth. Please show us why the witness had to open his locker. Now, is the white cloth just the clothing that he came in? Probably. <laughs> yeah, it should be that. Is it the guard? Well, what do you have to say to that? No. Uh, partner, you really want to know the reason I had to open my locker? Why? So I can stuff you in there. Huh? I'm sure the world would be a better place with you sent off to the boneyard. Unfortunately, unsolved cases can't be stored in the evidence room. Now I'm an unsolved case? Okay, fine. Something went wrong in that evidence room. Oh. That's why Marshall had to open his locker. What you watching? Knife. Knife? Yeah, it's a good one too. Because he slashed me. The unexpected event itself is the reason. I'd better have another crack at this. Be sure us why the witness had to open his locker. So they fought, and because of this attack, with the knife, wait, hold on, do I see anything more, more incriminating? Whoa, 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 stop, whoa, 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 whoa. That's what? why. Yeah. For some reason, you disguised yourself as Detective Goodman and entered the evidence room, though I don't know to what end yet. Yet. However, something unexpected happened. Officer Meekins barged in on you. When asked to show your ID card, you pulled a knife on him. However, Officer Meekins panicked and the white coat you were wearing was soiled with blood. A bloody white coat. It couldn't just walk out like that. So you hid the coat in your locker. Hmm. A bad partner. Now then, Officer Marshall, are you ready to tell us the truth? Looks like I demonstrated you out. Underestimated? Look like I underestimated y'all. I hope you're happy now, Mr. Edgeworth. Two years ago. You're only half as persistent then as you are today. We all wouldn't have to be here now, now would we? Officer Marshall, tell the court what you did. All of it. All right. Seems the time has come. Marshall's confession. 
I had to do it that day. I couldn't just stand by and let it die. I stole the detective's ID and dressed like him. I planned to take out the evidence. I wouldn't expect an officer Meekins. I knocked him out. I managed to escape. I knew which areas wouldn't be caught on camera. There weren't any murder in the evidence room at 5.15. So, the supposed victim was really you. There's one thing I still don't understand. Traces of a large quantity of blood were found on the floor of the evidence room. If no one was murdered, then how could that be? Because we stabbed Meekins! Officer Meekins managed to cut his own hand. My guess is he's the donor. It was way too much blood for such a small donation. Okay. Stand by and let it die? When you say it, you mean... Do we even have to ask, partner? The SL9 incident. Two years have passed since that case was closed. It was going to completely end with the transferal that day. Not if I have anything to do with it. That incident's not over. But what did you hope to accomplish by sneaking into the evidence room? When a case is closed, only that case's lead detective can look through the evidence. I wanted to have a look at that myself for one more time. No matter what the cost. I don't care what anyone says, partner. That case is mine. But Officer Marshall wasn't in charge of that investigation. He was. Damon Gant, Lana Sky. Oh, Bruce Goodman. What? He was the head investigator. What? Oh, yeah. Right. I was a Marshall, wasn't. I guess Officer Goodman wasn't. All right. Why does he care so much about it? Has his own... yeah. Does his name... his last name belongs to one of the victims. That thing was my last chance, that's why I... Stole a detective's ID and dressed like him. I planned to take out the evidence. Why did you disguise yourself as Detective Goodman? Why didn't make it look like Goodman was carrying out the evidence transfer? They rusted for stealing evidence, which wouldn't get me anywhere. So you did it to fool the security camera. And the detective's ID card. He stole that the morning of the incident. So that really was why Goodman started filling out that lost item report. I returned his ID card. I left it on the floor in a prosecutor's office parking lot. The ID card I found was left there by Officer Marshall. Oh, okay, but back, back, back. <laughs> <laughs> you returned it? Was he alive at the time? How did you get there? Back, back, back. Back! <laughs> so essentially, you managed to succeed despite your lack of, despite your lack of foresight. What do you mean, partner? I mean the fingerprint activated lock, of course. No matter how well you disguise yourself, you can't change your fingerprints. Under normal circumstances, you wouldn't have been able to open that locker yourself. But he could because a rubber glove just happened to get stuck in the door. That means Detective Goodman must have opened the locker before Officer Marshall. I wouldn't expect an Officer Meekin, so I knocked him out. Oh, wait. You pulled a knife on Officer Meekins and tried to drive him off. But just say I was a little surprised. I only planned on being in the evidence room for no more than five minutes. I didn't think anyone would actually come in during that short time. Officer Meekins certainly is a one in a million type of person. He's taking a detective for an intruder and demanding to be shown his ID. I'll have to think a little more about his raise this year. When did Edgeworth get so much influence? Anyway, he threw himself at me and I ended up cutting him slightly. I'm sorry I've had to turn out that way. With me knocking him out and everything. By the way, what happened to your knife? 
Oh, you mean this one? I don't know what to say. Hmm. So you knocked Officer Meekins out and... I managed to escape. I knew which areas wouldn't be caught on the camera. So you did your research beforehand. Those who go into the desert are prepared don't live long, partner. Didn't think it would make a difference, so... The security tape is erased every six hours. While the guard is planned, no footage would have been left. However... Why did you code in your struggle with Officer Meekins? Someone was in the security room when I came out. The jig would have been up. Open my locker and stash it in there. What was Officer Meekins doing during that time? What else? He was sleeping like a baby. What you're saying is, on that day... There wasn't any murder in the evidence room at 5.15. But the blood found at the scene certainly indicates a crime took place. Are you blind? The victim shown on a tape is me. I am not dead yet, partner. So you stole the evidence from the locker? Actually, no, I didn't. Why not? When I opened the locker, the evidence was already gone. What? Mr. Edgeworth, where is that evidence? Still missing, Your Honor. Detective Goodman's locker was already empty, except for the glove that was already inside it. Someone else stole the evidence. Officer Marshall, may I ask you one thing? Far away, partner. It's a free country. Just remember, I'm also free to decide whether or not to answer. Why did you do this? Stealing a detective's ID, injuring a police officer. This is no small offense. Moreover, you're an officer yourself. This will have serious consequences. Can't just be forgiven with a simple cut in salary. Not that salary cuts are ever a valid solution. Hmm. Like I said, this isn't your case. This one's mine. I'll do anything it takes to get an answer I'm satisfied with. Wasn't he actually on the case? Oh, he's a prosecutor. Alright, whatever. Still, it was his case as much as it could be. Hmm. The witness has an unusual amount of zeal. Let's hear more. Can't just forget the SL9 incident. Do you know why? But that case was solved two years ago, wasn't it? That's the reason the evidence was stored in the evidence room. Joe Dark was convicted for his crimes. One thing I can say for sure is he deserved his sentence. No, we don't believe in the death penalty. I remember the Joe Dark case. It involved serial murders, didn't it? I don't intend to complain about how I turned out, but there's something that still bothers me. Something went down that trial. Something no one will talk about. What happened? I don't know. That's what I'm trying to find out. Hmm. Why is he so concerned with that incident? Maybe I should present him with what I think his real reason is. I had a feeling we'd wind up here sooner or later. Everyone involved here is related in some way to that case. I'd better take another look at the files. I had to do it that day, I couldn't just stand. Okay, besides. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we know why. Cause victims, Neil Marshall. Hey, what's that page called? Is gonna ask me. Probably. Victims.
Officer Marshall, I think I understand. I think I know why you care so much about the SL9 incident. Sounds like you've been sipping too much cactus juice, partner. I have the SL9 incident file here. The name of Marshall is mentioned in here. In a list of murder victims. Neil Marshall, are you related to this man? Neil Marshall? Yeah, I'm sure you heard the name. Two years ago. Received the same lousy prosecutor award you got. What? A prosecutor? He must be talking about the King of Prosecutors award. I remember Prosecutor Neil Marshall. He handled the SL9 case before I did. That's right. He was killed. And the case fell into your hands. But what's his relation to you? He was my brother. He was investigating the murders with Damon Gant, the then Deputy Chief of Police. The group of detectives I was part of worked under them. We were desperate to prosecute the killer. Joe Dark. My brother fought Dark and was killed. That was the first time Dark left behind any evidence. That was all we needed. He was arraigned and incarcerated. The case was finally closed. At least according to the public records. What do you mean? My brother couldn't have been killed by Joe Dark. I knew my brother better than anyone. No one could have beaten him in a fight. That's it. That's your reason for your insane actions. There's more to my brother's death than what the records say. No matter how much you try to hide it, you can't fool me. Well, at least one thing's for certain. Now we know what happened at the police department on the day of the crime. It was the last day the SL9 case could be reopened. Not satisfied with his resolution, Officer Marshall planned to steal the evidence. Disguising himself as Detective Goodman, he entered the evidence room. Officer Meekins confronted him, so he rendered him unconscious and fled. Yes, this mystery has finally been cleared up. A murder took place at the police department that day. Hm. The things that happen by chance never cease to amaze. At exactly the same time as the murder at the prosecutor's office, this fake murder was going on at the police department. Chance? It's got to be more than just that. So if no one was murdered at the police department on the day of the crime, that means the murder in the prosecutor's office parking lot was the real one. Which in turn means only one person could have committed the crime. Chief Prosecutor Lana Skye. But wait! A verdict wasn't reached in yesterday's trial! Which is why we examine the incident at the police department today. But... The one reason the defendant was not convicted yesterday, but yet remained the mystery of the simultaneous murder at the police department. Seems to me your boy's got the draw on your partner. All the mysteries at the police department has been resolved, no doubt about it. The sole murder took place at the prosecutor's office. The only suspect is Lana Skye. The testimony of one Ms. Angel Starr is completely incontestable. I think we need contested a lot of it. If you have a response, make it a single word or less. Ah! <laughs> That's my case. Seems his trial has reached its conclusion. There's no room for doubt. Well done, Mr. Wright. Thanks to you, I didn't need to waste my time disproving the alleged murder at the police department. 
Martin, there's no doubt what I proved today is true. The apparent murder on the security camera's tape really was fake. But I didn't realize... That would end up proving Lana guilty. Now then, the time for the verdict has arrived. This court finds the defendant... Objection! <laughs> Your Honor, wait. Emma! The defense has an objection. A scientific objection. Right? What do you mean? Right. Mr. Wright, are you this girl's guardian? Your Honor? Oh, uh, in a sense. Please, Your Honor. All I'm asking for is a minute of your time. Please hear me out. Mr. Edgeworth, please? Mm. I don't want to leave any loose ends. You want a minute? I'll give you three. Oh, no. I was kind of in shock. I mean, finding out the SL9 incident referred to the Joe Dark killings. Now that she mentions it, the names of both Sky Sisters were in that file. But that's when I figured it out. I mean, what Officer Marshall was trying to do that day. So I knew his fingerprint had nothing to do with the crime. That left only one thing. The other handprint. I mean, the traces of blood found in Detective Gumshoe's locker. But no fingerprints were found on it, right? No, but I figured if I examined it scientifically, I'd be sure to find a clue. So, I ran over there and looked at it again. So, did you find something? Um, no. Huh? Sorry, I guess I'm not much of a scientific investigator after all. Um. <laughs> um, is that all? Please don't be mad. I'm just a high school student. And I'm just an attorney. Mr. Wright, those traces of blood are the only clue we have. If we can't find something wrong with them... Please, Mr. Wright, you're a professional. If anyone can save Lana, it's you. Me? Oh, boy. Time's up. Now then, Mr. Wright, with regard to the incident the police department, does any reasonable doubt remain? Um... It appears the defense is troubled by the other blood mark. Looking at the floor plans, a handprint was discovered around here. Is there a problem with this? So, hold on. That blood per- that, uh... Okay, we can't see the locker at all. Because the locker in question is... That one, the one just behind the badger. Wait, 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 wait. Yes. Yes. Maybe that's where this handprint comes into play, because this handprint... Was not in the video. It was not. Well, it, yeah, it was actually. You can see it there. Interesting. Mr. Wright, I'm sorry, I can't be of more use. But still, if you can't find anything wrong with that blood mark, Lana will be. Please answer my question, Mr. Wright. We don't have all day. Hey, yes, Your Honor. If ever I've needed to concentrate, it's now. What could be wrong with that handprint on Detective Gumshoe's locker? Could there be something I'm missing? Uh, I object. I mean, I've got to object. I'm going to object. Objection! This handprint left the crime scene. Clearly shows a contradiction. The only thing that seems clear is you're grasping, Mr. Wright. You've been staring pretty intently at those floor plans. Tell me, is there a problem with them? Hmm. Yes, this is strange. Take a good look at these floor plans. Something is missing. Missing? 
Which means something hasn't been drawn on there. Yes, something that, when drawn, will completely change the meaning of the blood mark. Let us pray the defense isn't simply trying to buy time. Very well, Mr. Wright. Well, this evidence here, there's got to be something I can use. Question is, which item can prove something is missing in the floor plans? Is it the badger? I think it's the badger. But I want to see the video? Because if there's something else that shows me there's something missing... Yeah, show me the badger. Take that. No? Yes? What about that piece of plywood? The Bloom Badger, mascot of the police force. Defender of truth, guardian of proof. Explain yourself, Mr. Wright. Please look at the floor plans of the crime scene. The Blue Badger is not here. So, so watch what happens when we put him in. This is where he was dancing at the time of the crime. No, it isn't, because people pass between them. Well, well, what? Look, uh, that's right. So long as the blue badger is dancing here. It would be impossible to place a handprint at this spot on the locker. What? So that means, uh, just exactly what does it mean? It mean it means it can't be done. You're saying blood traces were undeniably found on that locker. Don't look at me, I didn't put it there. Mr. Wright, think it through scientifically. Emma! On that afternoon? Officer Meekins was the one who brought the blue badge to the evidence room, right? After he put it down, it would be impossible to leave a hamper on that locker. So that must mean this blood mark was left there before the blue badger was brought in? Just one moment! I will not allow such far-fetched balderdash in my courtroom. It may sound far-fetched, Your Honor. But it's the only possible explanation. On February 21st, in the police department's evidence room, blood was spilled not once, but twice. B but how? The one time was captured on this tape taken by the security camera. Officer Meekins cut his hand, from which a trivial amount of blood fell. The problem is the other time... Someone bled prior to the struggle shown on this tape. It had to have been... It had to have been... Detective Goodman when he was really murdered. Objection! It's ridiculous. I refuse to accept your absurd claims. Objection! The murder portrayed in the security tape has been proven to be a fake. However, that does not explain the blood mark found on the locker. So then, assuming this murder you purport really happened, when did it take place? Demand you show evidence that proves when it occurred. When did the first incident occur? Mm -hmm. To summarize, the defense claims that prior to Officer Meekins being caught by Jake Marshall, who is posing as Detective Goodman, another incident took place in, the, in that evidence room. And that's right, the blood mark on the locker proves this. Very well, then tell us, when did this first incident occur? As Mr. Edgeworth said, proof must be presented. Proof that shows when the murder took place. There's only one piece of evidence that can show that. Check in sheet, yeah. Now then, will the defense please present its evidence? What shows when the first crime took place? 
this one. And there was that four, four twenty. Four, yeah. Anyway, it's that. All right, fine. If the crime took place inside the evidence room, then the killer would have had to enter it. And in order to do so, an ID card would have been required. An ID card? Oh. Oh, uh, the ID card record. Officer Meekins brought the blue badger panel into the evidence room at Ark. <clears throat> at the time, drop the controller. Let's see here. 4.50 p.m. Crime took place before that time, then it would be 4.40 p.m. Ah. Ah. Miles Edgeworth. Just what have you done? Never would have figured you had the nerve, boy. Drop the act, witness. It doesn't take a lot of thought to figure out it couldn't have been me. Nope, I ain't getting it. I'm afraid I don't understand either. It's clear from the luminol test that blood was there. However, when the second crime took place, both Officer Meekins and Officer Marshall failed to notice the blood. That means the blood from the first crime was wiped away by the real murderer. I would have, I would have had just ten minutes to murder the victim, carry his body away, clean up the blood, Unfortunately, that's physically impossible. That would mean the crime must have taken place before Mr. Edgeworth entered the evidence room. Well, let's look at the chart again. There's only one other card number remaining, 777-7777. Talk about a lucky number. Wait, that doesn't make sense. How could Detective Goodman have entered the evidence room? Since there's no record of his car being used beforehand, he must have entered along with the real murderer. And that's the only plausible explanation. Isn't there also the fact that, like, there's a guest pass, like the one we were given, that might have been given to someone who has, for example, lost their ID card earlier in the day? Just maybe, I don't know, shenanigans? <laughs> He went in with 777-7777. Mr. Edgeworth, please look into this ASAP. Find out whose ID number is 777-77777. I think that's too, 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 too many sevens. It's one seven too many, Your Honor. Unfortunately, I'm unable to look at the owner of that ID card. At least at present. What? Explain yourself, son. The ID number 777-7777 belongs to someone with the rank of captain or higher. Someone who is a so-called executive officer. You don't have the authority to inquire into such a person's identity. Objection! Man, that's ridiculous. Just how? I'm not finished talking, Mr. Wright. There's one situation in which we can be granted such authority. If an official charge filed against an executive accepted. An official charge? You're all a lie, can't you? With your cover-ups and your forgeries. Is Chief Prosecutor Lana Sky count as an, uh, an executive office? That's how the prosecutor's office operates. Take pride in my work, Officer Marshall. I would appreciate it if you would keep your slander to yourself. Slander, is it? Okay. Let me ask a question. Yes. No, not to you. To her, the defendant sitting over there. Your own little executive. Lana? Don't be stupid. She's been charged with murder. Of course, we've looked up her ID number. And it's not 777-7777. Don't blame me for a fool, but that's not what I want to ask. All I want to know is one thing about that incident. The SL9 incident? Answer me this, Chief Prosecutor. In that trial two years ago, did you really only use legitimate evidence?
Do you need a witness to repeat this question, Chief Prosecutor? I heard him fine, Mr. Edgeworth. Years ago, I was in charge of the prosecution and for that trial. At the time, we, occasionally we felt the powerlessness of the law. At least, I did. Mm. But Lana, I became a prosecutor in order to suppress crime with the law. But before I realized it, we were the ones being suppressed by the law. Defendant, just what are you saying? I'll ask you again, Chief Prosecutor. During that trial two years ago, did you really present all the evidence in court? Can you look me, an investigator in that crime, in the eye and say you did? The prosecutor, you didn't. I don't have to, Officer Marshall. Why won't you answer him? Drastic crimes require drastic measures. That's just the way it is. We did what we had to in order for him to get the verdict he deserved. Lana! Even if it involved forging evidence. <laughs> See? That's what I'm talking about. No. No! <laughs> Order! 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 Lana's remarks caused such a stir, the chaos in the courtroom could not be quelled. The conclusion of the trial would have to wait until the following day. <laughs> sure. To be continued. Oh no. 